Hey, how's it going? DeAndre Jones here from Become a Free Runner. Today we're talking about shoes. Don't forget, if you like this video and you want to see more like that in the future, you should definitely hit that subscribe button. Put it right here. Let's get started. First, I'd like to start off by saying that you don't need trainers to start parkour free running. You don't need really anything to start parkour free running. You get some shoes you already own, or you can go barefoot if you're not exactly sure where to start, and you can begin training. So don't feel like you have to go out and get some shoes, but this is just for anyone who's who's been training for a while or they're just looking for a specific pair of shoes that they don't mind training in and don't mind destroying because we do destroy shoes very fast but they don't know exactly where to start. This video is just for you. Okay, so when you're looking for the right pair of shoes, there's a couple things you need to think about. Grip, obviously, we jump to rails, we flip off walls, we, we, we stand on our feet a lot and we land on our feet a lot and it's really important that you find shoes that aren't gonna slip out underneath you and let you fall. Also, cushion. We take a lot of drops and it's important to protect the bottoms of your feet. You don't want to make sure you want to make sure that you're not, you know, taking really big drops and you feel uncomfortable that your that your shoe's not able to quite support your weight underneath you. Next, you want to find comfortability, breathability, and like flexibility. So basically, just shoes that are comfortable that allow you to move, give your feet free range of motion, also very bendable, so you you know you don't feel stiff while you're running. And also you want to find some shoes that'll last, durability. You know, you want to find some shoes that are gonna last you a while. For me, typically, if a shoe can last three months, then it's good with me. So I found shoes that have lasted longer, and that's great. Um, please remember that I do train quite heavily. I train quite a bit, and I do a lot of bigger, bigger things than most people, most new practitioners will do. So I go through shoes pretty quickly. But if you can find shoes that you know that last you three months or so, that's perfect. Now, don't forget, you got to find some shoes that you like style. You know, um, I find that to be the least important. But it also it is very important that you find a pair of shoes that you do like. That way you will you like you'll cherish them. You won't be regretting you know going to a jam in some shoes that you just don't like. So the first thing we're going to start off with, probably the most important, is grip. Again, you want to find some shoes that are grippy so you don't slip out from underneath you. With that in mind, you're going to want to find grip with very sturdy rubber, and you want the sh the rubber to go throughout the whole sole of the shoe. The reason why you don't want rubber broken up in many pieces. Um, and just like weird type of designs with, with grip is just because you want to make sure that no matter where you land on your foot, you have the comfort of knowing that there's something grippy underneath you that will stick and it won't slip out. So all the shoes that I'm gonna show you, they all have a similar trend in mind. You know, they all just have one piece of rubber along the sole of the shoe. I'll give you an example. Um, these are Pumas. I'm not exactly sure. These might be Cabana Racers or something like that. But look at the bottom. See how it's just one solid, piece of rubber just one solid grip of rubber tread in it that's that's always great you want to find some some type of design of tread that works best for you people choose different types of um, tread designs some people think certain certain types are better than others but basically you just want to find grip that goes along the whole shoe the reason why if you go for precision and you don't make it quite quite there even if you land right here you're going to be supported with some grip even if you land on your arches you're going to be supported with grip and if you accidentally overdo it land on your heels you're going to have some grip there and you won't completely slip out from underneath you. All the shoes have this in mind. Next, you want to find some shoes that are comfortable, very flexible, and um, and very breathable. So, a shoe I have in mind is the Take Flight Ultra. There's a link down in the description if you want. If you're very interested in ordering these, they're about to come out pretty soon. But basically, again, whole bottom, full of nothing but rubber, rubber tread. But they're very, very flexible. See, I can wrinkle up the whole shoe and it still keeps its form and it's still um, still very sturdy. The reason why you want to do that is because you want your foot to be able to move, you want to be able to feel the ground and the textures underneath you and you want to make sure that your shoe isn't too stiff because it might hinder your movement. Next thing you want to think about is cushion and shock. So basically you just want to find shoes that will support you, that you feel comfortable jumping in and landing on concrete and you won't feel like you're going to bruise your heel or bruise the ball of your foot. A perfect example of this is these, uh, these ideas. They have great shock the only thing about them, they might have too much shock. If you see down here, the heel is raised pretty high. It might be a bit too much shock, but I know some practitioners that, that like their shoes this way and they prefer the shoes to be really thick and they feel like that's what's the most important. One thing to think about when shoes tend to have a lot of shock, they tend to be kind of stiff. As you see, the shoe's a little bit harder to, to bend than the other shoes. But again, one solid piece of rubber except for this side right here, but that's okay. And the tread is, is not. If you prefer shoes with less shock, maybe you want to find you want to feel the ground a little bit more. You want to be able to feel your environment. And you want your foot to have a little bit more room to play with. You want to find shoes with smaller um, impact soles, such as these. Sorry, such as these. The Take Flight Ultra. It's really, really small. You can definitely feel when I'm wearing them. I can feel everything on the ground. 
and um, I know exactly what I'm stepping on, I know exactly what I'm jumping to, and I have no problem with my feet being able to wiggle around this shoe. Also, shoes like um, Feiyu's, although they're very, very thin, they tend to um, break down a lot easier because it's just the very minimum uh, material that you would need to actually make a shoe, but that's very good if you're looking for shoes that are very flexible, also, also very light. Now, you also can't forget style. so. These are probably my favorite. I tend to go with like gray shoes, black shoes, with like maybe like a little bit of blue. Blue is my favorite color. So I like this shoe a lot, but um, again, you know, single tread, single uh, piece of rubber along the whole sole. Um, the grip, I mean, the cushion is not that thick, so it is very, very flexible, but there is some padding there. I do like some, like some padding when I'm taking drops or something like that. But it also looks very, very nice, and um, you just want to find a happy medium. So if you find, you know, um, grip soles that are too thick or the heel is too thick generally they're not gonna be as flexible they're not gonna be as light but if you find shoes that are too light they tend to not have very good grip um, and very good shock so it's just, it's just about finding that perfect balance in between another thing that I want to talk about that I didn't quite touch on is price um, some people feel like you have to buy the most expensive shoe in order for it to be good that's not that's not true at all um, you can go to a thrift store find some shoes like this they're like diamonds in the rough but you can still find them um, I don't know if there's Ross's where you guys are, but I go to Ross a lot. I go to thrift stores quite a bit, the Goodwill, stuff like that. I, I, and I search the internet for countless hours, so I'm not spending a bunch of money on trainers because you're just going to destroy them in the end, and, and it can be quite expensive after a while unless you know where to look. So just look for, you know, um, hole in the wall stores and cheaper places that you can find shoes. So that's going to end this video. Don't forget if you like this video, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. Comment down below, tell me what kind of shoes you like, maybe you'll help some people along the way. And also if you want a more detailed tutorial or guide on how to um, go buy shoes or what kind of shoes you want to wear, uh, you should click the link down below. I wrote a detailed article on what you want in a shoe and what you don't want in the shoe. So hopefully that can help you as you go out and try to find the perfect pair, perfect pair of trainers, I'm sorry. But um, until then, train hard, be safe. Catch you in the next video. Peace.